know there's a ton of words on this slide behind me, but what's actually really on the slide behind me is the 100 most common words in the English language. And believe it or not, 50% of everything that we read and write consists of these 100 words. I know that some of these words are pretty obvious ones, like so, and, could, should, would. Um, some stick out, like number or oil. Um, personally, I don't feel like I use oil that often in my day-to-day -day life. But if you do, no judgment, because that is one of the 100 most common words in English. And for 50% of almost all written and read content, this isn't a whole lot. But at the same time, what this tells us is that knowing English doesn't necessarily mean knowing all the words. And being able to communicate in English doesn't necessarily even mean knowing a lot of words. So in surveying our class, nearly 55% of students said that you guys wanted to learn four or more languages or be fluent in four or more languages at some point in your lives. Although it seems like sort of a long-term goal or even something that's sort of a pipe dream, at the same time, we're gonna tell you how that can be achieved in even shorter of a time span than say a lifetime or even a decade. The other thing that you guys mentioned was that more than two thirds of you guys said that learning a new language was at least moderately difficult, if not harder. If you think about it in that context, we're here to show you six easy rules and six easy parts essentially of how to learn a language and how to think about learning a language in a much easier context that'll really speed up the process for you or just make it seem a little more approachable. So we're here to tell you how to go from fearful to fluent, six essential parts to learning a language today. My name is Alice. Belinda. Lydia.
to learn Korean, I had like a lot of um, like little tools or kind of tricks that I helped myself like learn like little words with. And um, we can actually even use the example that we did in class, you know, how uh, Professor McCready used us like to walk through our house and remember like certain things in a sequence, like create a schema with your own brain. This is kind of similar to that in a way that you're using different things to help you learn. Like, and the weirder it is, it'll help you. For example, uh, when I was learning Korean, like the way you say hello is annyeonghaseyo, but people, you know, found it hard to actually say that or remember how to say it. So my friends were like, oh, we found this thing, it's like, onions are on sale, if you say it really fast, it sounds like hello in Korean. <laughs> so yeah, and then another thing is, um, I had a really hard time remembering, remembering how to say aunt because there's two different ways to say it. One is your brother, or your mom's uh, sister and your dad's sister. So there's two different words, komo and imo. And I had a really hard time uh, remembering that until I made the connection that my dad's sister's name is Gomadi, and we call her Goma for short. And so that means like dad's sister. And so obviously the other one is Emo, which is mom's sister. So if you can create like things like that, little like tricks and you know shortcuts in your brain to remember those types of phrases and words, it'll really help you out. Um, so you can glue a memory or you know something that kind of like is relevant in your own life to certain words and certain phrases that'll help you remember them better. And uh, when a word becomes natural, like now I can just say Kumo Nimo really easily. I don't need to think about my aunt being my dad's sister to remember that word um, or that sequence. And another example here is we have Hincho Pusto, which means nice to meet you. So, Hincho Pusto. Yeah, it's weird. So you'll be like, oh wow, the next time you remember that, you'll be like, oh yeah, they talked about it in class. So uh, certain quirky, different ideas and ways to you know think about these phrases should probably help you out because they'll stick out to you and you'll remember it even uh, next part is part four, and I'll pass that to Alex. Yeah. So we've definitely talked about this idea in class before, and it's really the idea of creating smart goals. Smart goals, like we've learned, are specific, 
measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. What this really means is that although it can serve as a long-term sort of overarching goal, like I want to speak Mandarin fluently in four years through X, Y, Z means, these SMART goals ultimately serve as really good milestones for you to gauge how far you're going along in a language, but really how well you're faring in terms of your progress. So ultimately, fluency and vocabulary aren't necessarily just one-size-fits-all goals, right? You might think back to high school when your high school Spanish teacher or your French teacher just said, well, you should know 100 vocabulary words by the end of the semester, but ultimately, knowing all 100 of those words doesn't necessarily mean you know how to communicate with those 100 words at all. For some reason, from seventh grade, I still remember the term pants in Spanish, pantalones, and cat, gacho. I have no idea how to use those words, but I know those words, right? And that's really the value of vocabulary without really learning how to fluently use that language to communicate. So when considering the idea of setting SMART goals, what you should do is set smaller goals that you can essentially check your progress with when it comes to learning a language. A really good um, example would actually be, say, in about a month, so one month into starting to learn Spanish, I would like to be able to sit down at a restaurant and fluently order a meal in Spanish, right? So in one way, this judges how you can communicate to, say, a server or a employee at the restaurant in Spanish, but at the same time, it ensures that you have essentially a smaller goal and essentially a smaller package to help you judge how far you've gone in terms of your learning. What you shouldn't do is set large scale nebulous goals that essentially just say, I need to know X, Y, Z thing, right? For example, a lot of my friends uh, when I was studying abroad in Germany just said that, I just want to be fluent in German. What does that mean, right? Does that mean that you can go sit, on, sit next to somebody on a bus and have a conversation? Or does that mean that you can essentially to deliver a doctorate level dissertation in front of your professors in German. There's no real benchmark for it, so it's really difficult to know when it comes to these not smart goals. I wouldn't call them dumb goals, but I would just say they're just a little harder to judge your progress by and essentially not as smart. So ultimately, the idea is to create checkpoints in between goals to keep yourself on track, right? So about two weeks in the, so going back to the idea of being able to fluently order a meal in Spanish, um, about two weeks into that goal, I would see what kind of vocabulary I know and what kind of sentences I can put together with that kind of vocabulary. Can I effectively and meaningfully ask for a check? Can I ask where the bathroom is? Can I ask what the menu special is for today? These are all questions that you can answer in that particular situation when it comes to creating checkpoints in order to achieve those goals. So part six is learning to sound like a native. So going back to what Ms. Rian and Divya were saying, learning to communicate isn't necessarily about learning the most words or learning the most grammar rules, but rather it's about getting used to a language as opposed to achieving these sort of nebulous goals of becoming fluent. What this means is that focusing on learning to use the language is more important than learning the individual piecemeal components of it. And furthermore, these rules apply to learning almost any other language. In the same way that Divi learned Korean, I learned German. And in the same way that I learned German, uh, Belinda sort of learned American Latin English. <laughs> so, Obviously, these rules really come together in a really meaningful way that help us essentially learn that learning a language isn't necessarily about putting together the little bits, such as the words and the grammar rules and the suffixes and the prefixes, but rather about learning to communicate like a native and being able to at least linguistically fit into wherever you might travel to in the future in terms of learning that language. So fearful to fully, to conclude what we've talked about so far, um, learning a new language is not impossible. That's something that a lot of people, you know, look at it almost as if it's like a mountain, but they're just looking at it too close. It's definitely possible, and we've done it like in our later stages of life. We weren't like five year olds when we started learning German or Korean or anything. So it's definitely possible. It just might take a little bit more time commitment, you know. Um, many resources are still available, some of which are free. Uh, like I took Chinese at UTB, and it didn't really help me out because the way that they were teaching it here was not the way I was learning, uh, or like that how I was built to learn languages. So it doesn't have to be that you have to follow a specific way to learn a certain language. Like the way that they teach it isn't always right for how you learn. So there's uh, lots of other resources available and you need to take advantage of those because you know it doesn't always fit the way that you process words or languages or sounds or you know anything. So uh, definitely take the time to go ahead and like search your resources, see what's available to you. Um, creating realistic goals and checkpoints as we just uh, mentioned is the most probably uh, one of the most important parts because without having a set goal or a milestone you don't know how much you're achieving 
or how much you're accomplishing. And if you definitely have like a business trip coming up in six months, I'm like, oh, I really need to know like how to yeah, at least be like conversationally better, ask where the bathroom is, or do this, that, and the other. Then that's like a good like you know set up set like oh in like two months then I should know this much, and in four months I should know this much, and by the time I get there I should know this much. Um, so creating goals like that will really help you out and in uh, progressing yourself in that language. Uh, last but not least, focus on learning to use the language versus being perfect. So this is one thing when you get to the country that you're going to, it's not going to be like the, the um, natives, as I've experienced before, they're, they know that you're not from there. You know what I mean? <laughs> they know you don't know this language as well as they do. So for you to say where bathroom instead of respected sir, would you let me know where the bathroom is? Like it's, they're gonna know, you know? And it's okay to make those mistakes. You're not gonna be perfect. And it's gonna take a lot of time for you to get there. And don't be ashamed of that is the main thing. You know, like languages, people learn them at different paces, people learn them different ways. So it's gonna, you know, you're gonna make mistakes at first, but you're gonna, that's what you need to get through to get to where you want to be. So, yeah. So last but not least, we're gonna at least have you guys walk out of this classroom today knowing at least one useful word in one of the languages that you guys indicated you wanted to learn. So based on survey results, the most popular languages that we wanted to learn as a class were French and Spanish. And given that 65% of you already communicate with somebody else in a different language on a daily basis, this shouldn't be so bad. So we're gonna apply the concept of mnemonics Spanish one with um, 
So the Spanish word for steel is robar, and you could do it for English speakers as like robar. If you said it really fast, you would say in Spanish so robar. Oh, okay, very cool. All right. <laughs> and uh, for uh, Spanish, for calle, which is street, we kind of thought of something, uh, you know, like Kanye West, and say Kanye really fast. And he grew up on the streets. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 